Get your middle fingers ready, because we're talking about Dodger from Guards of Atlantis today. I'm Brandon. And I'm Jordan. And uh, this is Optimal Play. We're back to talk more uh, elite, elite, did I just say elite? Like it's 1999? I think you did. Damn it, I meant elite. <laughs> Guards of Atlantis strategy, yeah? Yeah, definitely. You said two things that surprised me then. The middle finger I didn't know, that was funny, and then elite, wow. Yeah, yeah, that was not funny. That was just, uh, that was just... Should we actually, should we restart this video? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, can, I can cut that out I'm in post. I'm I'm I'll, 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 right. I'll bleep it. No yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Everyone will just think Did I, I just dropped say, an F-bomb. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I meant elite. Yeah, okay, here we go. <laughs> Oh, so this is our series where we're looking, going card by card through the uh, sweet heroes in the game Guards of Atlantis, and um, we're not experts. I, I just think of it as uh, we're, we're sharing our sharing our learning. That's right. right. As, yeah. as we go, yeah. Um, if you've uh, if this is your first video, we've done a few of them in the past, and also welcome. It would be great if you would subscribe to Optimal Play. Maybe hit the like button, drop us a comment. Uh, it's the only way to support the channel. There you go. So that would be awesome if you did. Uh, with that, let's get right to it. Um, I'm going to introduce us to Dodger. Yeah. Dodger hated delving through the dusty tomes. That's the entire sentence. Delving through the dusty tomes. All right. Mm. Well, she hated it. Yeah. It was always the more practical aspects of dark magic that fascinated her. So when a demon offered to complete her training by bypassing the boring formalities, it took a mirror for her to realize there was fine print in that contract. Oh, no. It took a mirror for her? This is something about the I way think, this is written. I think it's, it's like, saying like she signed the contract and then she looked in a mirror and realized that oh she, she had, had been like, she had been possessed or something. She, I see because she does have meant to be minute. And she does have been. horns and a tail now, so yeah, yeah. maybe she didn't always. <laughs> yeah, right, that, right. That uh, that's probably the implication. Yep, good call, good call. Um, okay, so so Dodger has um, unlike Wasp, who was the the last one we recorded, who had really middle of the road. Uh, kind of stat bars here. Right. Uh, Dodger's got average attack and brawler, but then low defense and then high initiative movement and um, pusher role and init initiator role right. cards. I still, even though I've looked in the rulebook and read the definition of initiator, I still have a hard time. It's hard to conceptualize. Learning yeah. much from that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, so so she is much more specialized. Um, you know what it feels like? It feels like they wanted to have eight of these. Because if they just had seven, it would look funky. And so they're like initiator. Maybe, yeah. Think about that. Yeah, that could be. It, it round, rounds out the nice block <laughs> yeah, of, exactly, of stats. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so the icons on her um, sheet here tell us that she's long range, that she forces discards, uh, she can self-heal, which means uh, recovering cards, right? Mm -hmm. And that uh, she can farm, which it's funny that uh, this, this uh, took that lingo from MOBAs here which doesn't yeah. right like farm j j just say farm and that's the entire statement is you have to there's be a little kinda, picture of gold so yeah you, that's true but yeah it is I, totally I feel like it requires a little bit of um insider perspective that is some elite lingo for sure <laughs> god damn it all right read read our gold card <laughs> okay. read our gold card the doctor's gold card is dread razor which is 12 initiative one defense one move one attack one range uh, with an effect, plus one range if you are adjacent to an empty minion spawn point in the battle zone, target a unit in range. And so that's a good introduction to Dodger, because Dodger has a lot of effects that care about empty minion spawn points right. adjacent or within a specific radius. Right, and I think since she's the warlock, like, the flavor there is usually a lot of death has occurred. Right. Uh, but it can also be that minions were pushed off of their spawn points. Right. Or, or uh, someone was standing there, so they spawned somewhere else in the first place. Sure. However it is, there are certainly tricks you can pull to to turn these things on faster. Right. It would have to be that someone was standing there, the minion spawned somewhere else, and then that other unit moved. Because it has to be completely empty, not just empty of a minion. Uh, yes, right. that, that is right. right. Yeah, yeah, and, and so, yeah, maybe, maybe this is conversation for the end, but yeah, so also as an enemy player, you can stand on spawn points to power her abilities down. Right, it's... right. Or you can use Wasp, who we just talked about, mm -hmm. to move uh, minions off spawn points. That's true. I, I am going to try to... Not, so I remember uh, we recorded two of these back-to-back -back before. Yeah. We did Brogan and Tiger Claw, and in the Tiger Claw video, we constantly referred back to Brogan. Okay, so we're not I'm going to try to not do that with Wasp. Okay. I don't know how successful I'll be. I, you know what? That'll be my one reference. No more. <laughs> no, no more. Okay. No more. No okay. more. Anyone but Wasp. Anyone it's but fair Wasp. Game. It's fair game. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is... It's a, just a little... Like, this is 
It's a little almost a, most of the time I feel like it's a minion killing card, mm -hmm. right? Because it's a one attack. So if it attacks a hero, you're really just asking them to discard a card, right? Uh, no, no specific card. Um, but but if you really, if you're really going for the kill, uh, that plus one range can can help you set up a set up a few discards against the same person for sure. This strikes me as very weak, actually. Aren't there heroes that have gold cards that are just one attack, two range? Um, and also have an effect on them, maybe? Maybe? I don't know. Right? Like, this is I like... I mean, it's one attack and one range, or go through a hoop, and you can have one extra range. I don't know. Is that really strong? I'm not no, sure. it's not really strong yeah. by, by any means. And again, you can't evaluate... Uh, you can't just compare, like, one character's gold sure, card to sure, another's sure, without sure, considering sure. the rest of their kit. But, yeah, I agree. This is not a strong card. Right. Yeah, to, to have it be, when there's no minions, when there's not an empty minion space next to you, have it be a one attack melee, it's pretty, it's pretty bad. Pretty weak, yeah. Pretty bad. But it'll get the job done against a minion, as you said. And you can um, help turn it on with her death trap. Right. Her silver card, a basic skill, it just has a one defense on it. So did her gold. So, so we're seeing why she has, I think she had a low defense stat, right? Yep. Yep, yep. two. Uh, basic skill, area, three, radius. You may remove a friendly minion in Radius. Mm -hmm. One enemy hero in Radius who is adjacent to an empty minion spawn point in the battle zone discards a card if able. Uh, so this is another... Uh, this this brings kind of the rest of her like empty minion spawn point theme kind of into focus where she has, uh, among her cards, several opportunities to remove friendly minions, yeah. uh, which is ostensibly not a thing you want to do, right? Because right? then you're losing the push, but it has... Two real benefits. One, it creates empty spawn points, mm -hmm. uh, which her cards care about, and it can deny gold to the opposing team. Right. Especially if you can remove the big heavy minion, deny four gold, which you'd only be able to do if that was the only minion left, right? That yes. Deny four gold. And that's a big decision because it does cause the push. It does cause the push, yeah. but that still seems kind of valuable. I mean, this was the card I found players playing against most mm. uh, when I played as Dodger. Players do not want to fall into the death trap. You know, <laughs> yeah. they, just, they want to avoid, and so like that adds a whole level of meta, and it's so uh, it's so easy to put in the minds of your opponents because it's a very simple effect to understand, and right. they don't want to stand there, and that yeah. is a yeah. benefit to you. As well. And and what matters on this one, unlike the dread razor, it doesn't matter whether you're next to the empty minion spawn point. It matters whether the targeted hero is right. Um, whether they're against an, next to an empty minion spawn point or a friendly minion that you could remove with this. Right. That means they're also risking getting hit by the death trap. Right, exactly. Uh, yeah, cool card. I like the design. Yeah, that's cool. I think maybe the best use for it is playing it, having another hero, an enemy hero, set up to do a minion kill on their next turn. So they move to another, they move next to a friendly minion spawn mm -hmm. point with a friendly minion on it. Then you get to remove that minion, deny them the two gold, and discard one of their cards. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. And it's a it's a slower card, so a lot of the time you would get to do that if they if they try to make that move to be to line up the minion kill. Right. You're you're here with your trap. Right. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So we've got Little Finger of Death next. <laughs> uh, this is the level one red card. Nine initiative, three defense, five movement. It's also a one strength attack with two range, and it says target unit in range plus two attack if you target a hero with a card in the discard. So if you've already discarded a card with your death trap, plus two strength, that makes this a three strength attack. Still relatively weak. This strikes me, yeah, I don't know if I had actually had this thought about Dodger, but her red and gold card are both pretty weak attacks. To start In off. a way that just shows that, uh, yeah, probably attacking heroes is not how she wants to spend... Well, she's got this middling her... attack stat, and I think that's a reflection of the fact that she can discard cards in a few different ways. Yeah. And that's how she gets her kills. Not by brute strength, but by multiple little needles. Much like other heroes that we've covered, but won't mention. Yeah, that. I guess. Except I thought that the and this is a, I mean I've said in other videos that that I'm not sure how much I even like the like stat bars sure. thing that they that they've done here, but the um, attack initiative shield and uh, movement those like correspond with symbols on cards in a really specific way that I would expect a high attack bar to mean high sword values on cards. Mm. Um, well, maybe we'll see that in the upgraded reds. Quite possibly. Yeah. Yeah. But but yeah, for this one to be a one and situational three, yeah. right? Uh, that's a weak red card. I agree. Yeah, even for a level one red card. Yeah, I agree. Uh, well, so then instead of playing that, well, 
I was gonna say instead of playing that, you can play her Shield of Decay as a segue, but it's a defense card, so you probably wouldn't. Yeah. But anyway, um, it is a uh, blue ten initiative three movement, uh, area defense card that says three plus defense value has a radius of two and says plus three defense if there are two or more empty minion spawn points in radius in the battle zone. So if you're near at least two enemy minions, this is a six defense, which is pretty good. If yeah. you're not, then it's a three boot card. <laughs> like a three defense card, sure, in a pinch, you could use it, but uh, it's not what I would, it's, it's not what I'm looking for in a card that is a defense card. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's right. I, I'm starting to think, and and I've not really had these thoughts until live on this video, that Dodger starts pretty weak. I'm feeling that way, too. I, don't, I think Dodger is such a strong character, so I, right? I, I'm surprised to be feeling like these yeah. cards are not that great. The other thing, and and uh, again, correct me in the comments if I misunderstood this, but so Dodger, you know, as printed here on my copy of the game, which is from the first printing, uh, is a one-star character. which right. is, And we're doing the one-star characters first, so that's why, right. why we're talking about her now. I did in the second printing that was crowdfunded earlier this year. I looked through their like uh, summaries of the heroes and the hero packs and stuff, which also had stars. Dodger had two stars on there. Yeah, they changed the star ratings. Okay, I was gonna say either they revised the star ratings or made a mistake on the crowdfunding page. No, right? no, no, they revised <laughs> them. Yeah, and yeah, that's that's kind of an interesting point. Maybe these are slightly more complicated effects. I, I do think Dodger in the first printing stands out among the one star characters as particularly unique and probably difficult to play that decision of whether to remove a friendly minion can have a lot of consequences that are for a new play hard to ask a new player to consider yeah certainly not a first game choice yeah yeah, yeah. but i feel like the one stars should be that's a fair. first game choice that's right fair. so but there's a few one stars i wouldn't give to a, a player on their first game who else? i wouldn't give dodger i also would not give zargatha because hmm. i found that that character can be frustrating for new players to play because she's sort of slow in a lot of instances and uh, I think I think those are the main two I would avoid giving. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I haven't. Um... The, the third maybe that I might avoid giving is um, Sabina because Sabina has some very specific effects that uh, can be slightly hard to grok. Hmm. But I don't know. Yeah, I definitely don't, haven't felt that way about Sabina. Um, I could see it with Zargatha, with, yeah. with but. I don't know. In general, I hand the new players a stack of one stars. And, I do that too. and let them, too. let them go go nuts. But uh, yeah, Dodger in particular, and Dodger. I want to say I played on my very first game of Guards of Atlantis. Okay. Uh, but so it didn't uh, ruin my enjoyment of the game. At there least. you go. Yeah. But, uh, it was it was uh, tricky. Yeah. You're, you started with a two star character. Apparently, you've just always been elite player of Guards of Atlantis. <laughs> God, you're not going to let this go. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, read the green card. Okay. We've got Dark Ritual, which is a three initiative, two defense, two movement card. Uh, it's a skill with a three area. And it says, you, re you may remove a friendly minion in radius. If there are three or more empty minion spawn points in radius in the battle zone, gain one coin. And so I want to emphasize that in the battle zone means, you know, obviously the zone where the conflict is happening. So you can't be on yeah. the edge of the battle zone and use a minion spawn point from, a, you know, another zone. Yeah. And I think speaking of being um, new when I first played Dodger, I think I kind of mis misunderstood this card or I, I grokked it a little differently to, to say, to think that I needed to remove the friendly minion to get the gold. Mm. It was like a kill of your own minion and getting the gold out of it. I see. Um, in my head. But really... Again, it's just you could do that if you want to deny the opponent or or turn the rest of the card on. But if they're, you're already near three enemies or three empty spawn points, and radius three is big, so that's not that hard as long as it's not a brand new battle zone. Right. Um, then you just play this and get gold. Right. Uh, which I like cards that you just play and get gold. Those yeah. Always, those always feel pretty good. Yeah, especially if it's the difference between leveling up one extra level. Or yep. Not. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, and it is the first round of the game. If you can... Well, yeah. If, if, if you can kill a minion and get this Dark Ritual off, you can double level up. You can get two levels. Um, which, if, since we've been talking about how weak her level one cards are, that's, that's a pretty cool thing to be able to pull off. But yeah. that said, it is... The first round of the game, it's difficult to get into the battle zone and be near three empty spawn points. So. You may have to remove one of your own minions in order to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then, which might be worth it in the long run. Might be, or it might start the, or it might cause the minion battle to kill another one, and then start the chain of events that leads to your team losing. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> um, so her leveled up red cards are 
Let's see. Let's let's uh, we'll talk fingers first. Sure. So she started with little finger of death. That was yep. level one. Yep. And then uh, then she upgrades it to finger of death, and then finally middle finger of death. In like a really cheesy little joke here that I go back and forth on whether I hate it or love it. I love it. I think it's great. <laughs> um, so finger of death is a nine initiative. It has a uh, four defense, five boots, and um, it's a ranged attack that uh, has three range. It says uh, attack for one, target unit in range, plus three attack if you target a hero with a card in the discard. And middle finger of death also has three range. It has 10 initiative now, and then attacks for two plus three if you would target a hero with a card in the discard. And this turn, the target cannot retrieve cards. And what are those cards come with in terms of upgrades? Uh, great question. So if you upgrade to Finger of Death, you get Initiative. And if you upgrade to Middle Finger of Death, you get a Movement to upgrade. Mm. That Initiative oh. is really strong because if you have the Initiative upgrade and then Middle Finger of Death has 10 Initiative already, you're going at the speed of gold cards, really. Uh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you are. I mean, other players uh, might also have Initiative upgrades, but it's mm -hmm. still, you know, it's pretty fast. That said, I feel like these are still not great. As tier two and tier three red cards go, to attack for one or two, that's a situational plus. Is uh, and it's only a situational plus three. So like the 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 tier three middle finger of death, uh, when you do meet its criteria of a targeting a hero with a card already in the discard, it's still it's an attack for five, which is like uh, below average for a level three red card. I feel like. Yeah, that sounds like it might be right. I think that you really want to take that if you can turn off some heal effects. Yeah, yeah, and, and this, yeah, this turn the target cannot retrieve cards. It's only this turn. It's only this turn. It's also, real niche. You have to be against a hero who's doing that at all. Yeah. Or granting it to their their Allies, teammates or, right. or something, um, and then they have to be doing it that turn. Yeah. But if you can do that, oof. Oh yeah, yeah. that that hero's going to die. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you thwart if you thwart their plan to recover yeah. a card. Oh yeah, that is kind of niche. That is true. And I guess there are, um, as you get up to the higher complexity heroes, you also get heroes that pick up cards from their row, not just their discard, which I think that's still considered retrieving, yeah, I think so. right? Yeah, definitely. Um, so so it, this is primarily to stop like the, the healing that is recovering cards from, from discards, but it also can just mess up some other kind of heroes' mechanics in... in uh, I don't have any good specific examples here, because I, I haven't played with those characters very much. Yeah. Um... Yeah, but all in all, this is this is okay. Um, any other thoughts before I look at the uh, the other reds? No. All right, me neither. <laughs> so uh, instead of focusing on her fingers, she can focus on her skull with burning skull. Excellent. It's a nine initiative, six defense. This is a more defensive card. Uh, five movement um, attack. It's another ranged attack. It just attacks for four. So right off, it attacks for the same that finger of death does if you meet its criteria. Mm. Uh, targets a unit in range, which ranges two. After the attack, push every enemy unit adjacent to the target one space away from the target's space. And then Blazing Skull has a one more initiative at ten, one more attack at five, and says, target a unit in range before the attack. Push every enemy unit adjacent to the target one space away from the target's space. So that helps with defense modifiers. Yes, it gets their friendly minions that were helping them on defense out of there. Right. Assuming they had somewhere to go. They also have to be able to move in a straight line, right? Right. But that can also clear off minion spawn points, assuming they're standing next to some minions. Oh, good point. Spawn points, you clear those off. Yeah, yeah, you do care. Oh, I was going to say you care less about that if you go with these upgrades, but that's not true because the other reds cared about discards, not minion spawn points. Right. Um, and would those come with what? Sorry. Uh, oh, yeah, the... Uh, tier 2 Burning Skull upgrades your defense so it not only has more defense printed on it but comes with a defense item mm -hmm. and uh, upgrading to Blazing Skull you would get a Radius item yeah um, and Radius would it would increase you know, the radius of your Death Trap potential uh, actually Radius is a big deal because a lot of her cards count the minion spawn points in Radius that's right, right? like the farm effect that we talked about a second yep. ago yep. yeah um, that seems like the stronger line slightly I agree I think, yeah, because because finger of death, the, like the the bigger thing that finger and middle finger of death have going for them is the three range, mm. right? That I think is the biggest difference. That is a skulls. big difference, and it is a big difference. Yeah. The, the the once you have three range, that is a lot of the map that you can target. Yeah, with, with your with your card, um, 
but yeah, then it, then it, it just had, even though it, ha it has one less range, but then it has the attack value that you have to work for to, to get on finger of death. Right. Um, and it has that push, which I guess it is maybe not always like you, you must do it. Maybe sometimes you'd rather not. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, because, and in fact, I think I've seen this come up where, um, Dodger player had burning skull and they ended up, they were going to go before their uh, teammate who was wanting to do a melee attack, but Burning Skull was going to push them away, um, right? So it can sometimes yeah. screw up your own plans. That's yeah. maybe a, a, a uncommon situation, but, sure, sure. but something to be careful about. It's yeah. like that, it's a double-edged sword. That's fair. But yeah, overall, I think I, I like these better than the fingers. Yeah. Maybe they're just easier to pilot, easier to play with. That is certainly the case, I think. Um, yeah. Blue Should cards? The blues? Let's yeah. do it. So what was the old blue? The old blue was Shield of Decay. So we've got two straight line upgrades. We've got Vampiric mm -hmm. Shield and Aegis of Doom. So Vampiric Shield is 10 initiative, 3 movement, 4 defense, and 2 radius. And it says you may remove a friendly minion in radius, plus 3 defense if there are 2 or more empty minion spawn points in radius in the battle zone. So... The oh. defense goes up by one, and the number of minion spawn points goes down by one, right? Okay. That you need. Yeah. So that, that's a straight line upgrade. And then the Aegis of Doom, 11 initiative, 3 movement, 5 defense. You may remove a friendly minion in radius. If there are two or more empty minion spawn points in radius in the battle zone, plus four. So that would bring you to a nine defense. <laughs> wow. And this turn, you are immune. Oh, that's cool. That's a very strong effect. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. And those come with... Uh, a defense and then an attack upgrade respectively. And I feel like you read it almost like it had already been there but both of these let you remove a friendly minion in radius. The level 1 shield of K did not oh, have that text. I thought it did. So these are significantly easier to turn on. Um, yeah. Uh, or yeah, so sorry, the Oh, the, the two are, I don't, I don't know why we misinterpreted this, but I think we did. The two or more empty minion spawn points, that remains constant. Right. Um, for some reason in my oh, head, sorry. it was, it was, was becoming three. two instead of three. Yeah, I, I said that. That's oh, okay. In your head, yeah. No, two. It, it is always two, okay. but these give you the option to create one right. so that this works. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting that her defense stat is two when... When she has a card that can defend nine. for nine. Yeah, yeah, nine is a pretty strong defense. That should avoid almost any attack. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we should stop spending time on the okay. stat cards. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's. I feel like that's a consistent theme that we look at the cards and we're like, but yeah, that's how, how is that reflected here? Maybe it's you know. This maybe is it's just vibes. You know, maybe. Uh, yeah. yeah. Maybe. She, maybe she they feels like a defense too. Yeah. No. I, I, yeah. She feels squishy. She feels squishy. Those are those are quite strong cards. I can imagine using them often. You know, especially you know this this defensive nine is just. It defends. All, I attacks, think. I think attacks. I've seen an attack get to ten before, but okay. that was it's rare. that's the record. That's rare. that's rare. Yeah, nine will defend against almost anything. And you know what? When this says nine, it, it is ten. Cause oh, because you get getting a, the shield. Up you get a defense item, item on the way. Yeah, yeah. So you know. Yeah. It's it's all right. So the alternative blues here are drain essence and soul siphon. Drain essence has ten initiative, four defense, three move. It's a skill with an area of four, radius wow. of four, and it says perform a non-attack action of a card in the discard of an enemy hero in radius. Apply no yeah. item bonuses. So obviously, that's incredibly situational. Yes. You can't really evaluate that card without talking about who you'd be playing against and what's in their discard. Um so, yeah, this is definitely going to be really a game-time call. Do you go for this? Okay, yeah. Okay, we should talk about Soul Siphon first. 11, 4, and 3. Perform an action of a card in the discard of an enemy hero in Radius. Apply no... So it's the exact same. That... With really? one higher initiative? Perform an action of a card... Oh, uh, it doesn't say non-attack action. Oh. And that, I think, is a big deal. <laughs> Thank you. That's right. So, <laughs> that's a very big difference. So you could get another attack off. If you forced an opponent to discard. Yes. So probably what you'd want is you'd want to play that card when you have a really like high level attack character as a partner who's going to go in, make them discard their red card to block an attack. And yeah. then you can use their red card with that. To finish them off. To finish them off. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think you nailed it. I think that's the best use case. I think just in general that, um, that tier three dropping the non-attack makes it just all around is a, a much more useful card right because it's so easy to play around 
so easy to play around the not the uh what is it called soul essence the tier two one drain essence drain essence, essence. um it's so easy to play around that by not discarding your attacks, which most of the time is also what you want to do anyway. So it's not even, it's probably not even... Well, no, because Drain Essence targets non-attacks. So you play around... Oh, with oh sorry, so you want to discard attacks. the attack. Oh, actually, okay. So then that that is more interesting, because I feel like, you know, all else equal, you generally choose your skills over your attacks to discard when you get hit, so that you can fight right. back. Yeah. Um, also because at least your red card is usually your best card for... So, if you use it for movement or defense too, so you also want to hold it back. Right. Um, so, yeah, at least the encouraging them to discard their attacks so that you can't use their cards is... Yeah. Which I don't think they'll do. I think it'll just have the choice to use whatever card they Sure, discard. yeah. 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 Um, but there there was at least, there was no uh, hoop to jump through for that to work, right? There was no There was no uh, minion spawn points. No, and it's well, got a massive radius of four, and if you have a radius increase, it's radius five. That's basically any hero. That's true. I was, though, I was going to say, um, no no, no need for dead minions, no need for cards in this card, but obviously there are needs for cards right. in this you gotta card. you got to have a card so, in there. So it does have a setup requirement. But you so. know what? That's a good point. You probably want to pair these with the card that cares about cards in the discard, and then really focus on making that happen. That's one of the red. Yes. That's the burning skull, blazing skull. Right, exactly. um, yep, yep, totally agree that those those go together. Yeah. Um, all right, and then her uh, green cards. We've got so she started with dark ritual. Her upgrades are darker ritual and then darkest ritual because honestly, of course, this is the best named cards in the game. Are they <laughs> <laughs> darkest ritual? <laughs> darkest ritual. Yeah. Uh, I think I think Magic the Gathering did darker ritual in a one of its like unglued the joke sets because <laughs> oh, really? dark funny. ritual is a classic magic card. Okay. Um, but anyway, uh, the tier two darker ritual three initiative two defense two uh, movement skill with an area of three. You may remove a friendly minion in radius if there are three or more empty minion spawn points in radius in the battle zone. Gain two coins. Darkest ritual is uh, nearly identical but with. Uh, three defense. Oh, it's not not as identical as I thought. Only well, um, two initiative. Why did I think? And it is only two initiative. Jeez. Um, so this. So okay, let me just read it. You may remove friendly minion in radius if there are three or more empty minion spawn points in radius in the battle zone. Gain two coins, and you may retrieve a discarded card. Mm. For some reason, I really thought that the difference between these two and three, like if you had asked me when I did not have these cards in my hand, I would have said, yeah, it goes from gain one coin to gain two coins to gain three coins. You're thinking <laughs> like, of the tiger claw. That must be it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this one goes from one coin to two coins to two coins in a card. Yeah, which is better. It is probably better, yeah. especially because once you're on your tier three cards, the need for money is, is dwindling. Right. right. And the need to stay alive is heightening. <laughs> well said. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I like that this is slow for that purpose because you get attacked to that per that round. This goes after it, and right. you, you retrieve the card you just right. You're about it. yeah, and you use that to pick up your ten defense card again, and then you know right. You're set. You're squared away. Right. Uh, if you uh, follow this upgrade path, um, necromancy. So the the alternative to darker ritual gives you an attack, and the alternative to darkest ritual gives you a defense, um, which makes sense because that's a that's a defensive. Uh, build sure. the uh, so so the cool actually huh no, none of her green cards have the have the like the less common good items the range the radius upgrades uh, her greens don't have them at all yeah I didn't mention that Aegis of Doom does come with a range oh that's where Sorry. the range is so okay it, actually it's Soul Siphon comes with a range oh right right no that's range is range is good range especially is totally uh, all of her reds are ranged yeah no matter which build she you go with the, yeah. you, you like the range. That's a really strong point in favor of taking this soul siphon. Even yeah, though we talked about this being more situational. Right. Yeah. Agreed. Um, and then her uh, alternative green cards are necromancy and necromastery. That name I like. Necromastery is pretty good. That's great. Uh, so this is the punniest set of names. It really is. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, necromancy is three initiative, two defense, two uh, movement. It's a four radius area skill. If an enemy in radius has a card in the discard, respawn a friendly minion in a spawn point adjacent to you in the battle zone. Mm. And Necromastery is two initiative, three defense, two movement, a four radius skill that says uh, if an enemy hero in if an enemy hero in radius has a card in the discard, respawn a friendly minion at a spawn point in radius in the battle zone. So the difference there being it's not an adjacent spawn point; it's a spawn point within this giant radius of four. That's amazing, uh, especially because you know as 
their heroes are sweeping through the battle zone, killing minions, you can put one at the point that they started. And yes. Go all the way back to kill that. Yeah, drop Especially it on the if, other side. Right, drop it on the other side. Especially if they're sweeping in such a way that the heavy is at the end of their sweep. Then they have to go back, kill this one, and then come back for the heavy again. That can really forestall a push. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's well, wait, say that again? I was just thinking and there's like, no way they kill the heavy twice because that pushes when they kill no, the heavy. No, 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 no. What I was saying is they're like sweeping away. They've set up so that they're near the heavy. Mm. And then... Oh, have, suddenly you, you spawn, you spawn on, the, on, the, on the other side. And yeah. then they have to go back to the heavy again, right? Yep, yeah. yep. Uh, but this does have that setup of an enemy hero has to have a, disc, a card in the discard. So it's right. got to be um, later in the round after after someone's been attacked. Although it is slow, which means uh, Necromastery in particular is two initiative. Yeah, and so, so you... Um, I guess you could even do it like turn one to prevent a push if your uh, if your allied player gets a hit in before this round one. Yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, so this is, I think, just a this is a game time decision whether to to go this way. I mean, all 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 ability choices are to some extent, but more than ever, like you only want this if the enemy team is going for a push victory. I think that's right. right. I think that's the only time you're respawning your minions. Right. Um, Especially because you want those empty minion spawn points. Yeah, because so. you're you're setting back Dodger's own abilities, right. and you are feeding more gold potentially to the enemy team. Right, right. right. Uh, but both of those are pretty, and and you're setting yourselves back on a push win. Right. Um, no, that's that's not that's no, you're that's not true. Yourself. You're helping yourselves on a push win, right. but I think you're I think it's more stalling theirs than it being like a major tool in your minion battles doing yeah. one more but i can imagine taking this when you're going for a push victory as well because you can you know maybe they think oh we just need to each kill one minion to forestall a push or something and then you come sure in and you spawn another two minions back and then you win the push so, yeah um, yeah that's true especially if you combine it with dodger's ultimate which is tide of darkness which reads, whenever you perform an action, all spaces count as if they're in the battle zone and have a minion spawn point. So spawn one of your minions all the way across the map, all right? All the way across the map in, like, the far battle zone. It counts as being in the battle zone. It counts as a minion spawn point. They would have to go all the way wait. back. Wait, 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 wait. All spaces count as if they're in the battle zone and have a minion spawn point? Right? <laughs> So you just you're focused. No, like, it must I don't. Be. I don't think this works. As if they're in the. I I think that. Uh, oh, it would. You think it would teleport the thing back? I, in? I think. I think that yes, you could spawn a minion in uh, like a different battle zone. But then I think as as soon as your action is complete, the game is like, oh, there's a minion outside the battle zone. It's gonna move back. You're in. absolutely right. Yeah. You're absolutely right. <laughs> you but could still. You could put it as far away as. You possible. could still maybe use that to spawn it in a place where then it returns to even further away than any spawn point would have been or something well, like that. But then you could just put it. Anywhere you want in the battle zone, because every space has a space. Oh, true. You can just drop it anywhere in the yeah, battle so zone. Anywhere in four right. radius in the battle right. zone. Yeah, that's... Right. Okay, that's that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, but that said, this is a, this is a ridiculously cool ultimate. <laughs> Man, I, that, that effect... It's so funny that I got that so wrong, because that also has a four radius, so you can't drop it on the other side. Of the right. Map. I don't know why I thought that. <laughs> anyway, yeah, this is a cool effect. It doesn't combo as well with that card, but it does combo with, for instance, the getting gold cards. Yep, yep. The, the defense cards. The rituals, the... The death trap. Um, the death trap can just target anyone anywhere, right? But that's, because right. everyone is adjacent to empty minion spawn points at all times, right? right. So just discard a card. Yep. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I, and I, I just, I, I love the, I love when the ultimates are this type of design where it's like it's a punchline for what's cool about the hero. I know we, we promise not to talk about wasp, but wasp is an example of the other type of ultimate where all it does is like. Whenever you play your silver card, someone discards a card. Well, and and it doesn't is, tie much into what she's doing. Right. This ties into what Wasp, like, or not, who Dodger is, what's cool about her, and just the, like, way that feels ultimate. Right. I, I like it. And it still guarantees that Dodger's silver card is a discard, so. That's true. It does both. It does both. <laughs> yeah. Strictly better than Wasp. <laughs> Strictly better than Wasp. Why would anyone play Wasp? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, when you got Dodger. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, so what do you, what do you think of Dodger? You know, it's kind of funny because going through these cards, they felt slightly weak, but that's not been my experience playing Dodger. I found Dodger to be a character that can very easily force a bunch of discards and get hero kills. Um, yeah. And that's, I don't, so I'm not sure why, uh, why these cards feel weaker in reading them, but together they, they synergize very well. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. She doesn't feel weak, even though we... Uh... Our, we had a mad reaction to a lot of these individual cards. I think maybe what it is is that this really is a two-star hero, because as you go up, the hero cards get more and more situational. Yes. Not less powerful, just more situational. 
And maybe that's what is reflected here. I mean, these cards are just more situational than the other ones start here. On the yeah, I think that's well said. I think that the higher complexity characters are more than the sum of their parts <laughs> in a way where then when you look at a Brogan or something, he's kind of just the sum of his parts. Okay, that's <laughs> and, fair, yeah. Right? And, and so Dodger does feel more like a higher complexity character and, and makes sense that she would actually, actually she would uh, soon be a two-star, however you want to look at it. Right. She's been reevaluated as a two-star hero. Right, absolutely. Um, I guess as far as these uh, discussions, since we started with the ones, we'll need to hop back on there and see. Because I, I remember at least a couple heroes were like uh, ones when they were printed in the first printing as higher. Like they've gotten lowered to ones. Garrus, so, I think, right? Yeah, I think it was... I want to say it was one character in each of the three hero packs from the first printing. Really? It's that many? I kind of think so, because I was clicking through the, the pages that summarize what's in the hero packs. I want to say that all of them had a one star. Okay. I could be wrong about it being all of them. Well, some of them probably already had a one star. No, none, no. Of, none of them did. And I, that I no, remember. Right. And that's what was making me double take at it when I saw it on the crowdfunding. Yeah. Was because I was like, I, I'm confident that none of the hero packs had one star okay. characters. So yeah. we'll take a look. Maybe those will be the first two stars that we cover. Yes, I, that, that's where I was going with that. Uh, I will need to make a point to play some of them. Yeah. Uh, some of them I haven't played yet. But... Yeah. I haven't played all of them yet either. Yeah. Well, we'll have to play more Guards of Atlantis. Damn. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, Jordan. Thank you. This was fun. Was uh, fun. I think we, we really solved... No, I, I, I ended up more baffled about Dodger than I was before this discussion. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just have to play, play some more Dodger soon and then report back. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, you know, we'd love to hear from you on um, what makes who can articulate why Dodger is good <laughs> because we apparently can't. Yeah, but she is. She so is. you know, definitely I think she give is. her a try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think she's, I don't think she's weak. Yeah, no, definitely not. Cool. Well, we'll we'll look, uh, we'll look forward to hearing from you on that in the comments. We'll be back. Uh, are we are we talking Arian next? Since that was the other one <laughs> that we blurted out at the end of the Wasp video. Yeah, I think so. All right, all right. We'll be back to talk Arian next time. Till then, be optimal.